We will now begin our discussion on covalently bonded or molecular compounds. With molecular compounds, what we're really referring to are atoms that are sharing electrons. And those tend to be nonmetals. So these groups here. So if we're looking at the periodic table, these are the elements we're dealing with. Now I do want to preface this by saying that we are specifically talking about two elements. Once we get into organic chemistry in a month from now, we're going to start naming all different types of things that deal with carbon. This is essentially everything else. So this is actually much easier than ionic. You had to figure out what the first what the nonmetal is, the first nonmetal. And you had to figure out what the second nonmetal is. The second one will end in ide, just like the ionic. And then you have to figure out how many of each there are. And that's when we use the prefixes. And we'll, I'll show you the prefixes in a second. When vowels O and O or A and A are to appear together, when O and O are together, or A and O are together, the first vowel is omitted. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So first, figure out what the first nonmetal is, figure out what the second nonmetal is, second one's in Ides, and then figure out the prefixes. And you do that by count by determining how many of each atom there are. Here is a list of the prefixes. This is a memorization thing. There's really no way around it. All right, so N C L three. So N is nitrogen. Cl is chlorine. Remember, the second one ends in ide, so it becomes chloride. Notice I left a gap. I did that on purpose because we had to figure out what the prefixes are. Now, the, if the first one is mono, first one is one, is mono, we drop it. So that's a special rule. is one atom, you drop the prefix. That's the only time you drop it. So if the second one's a one, you still have to keep that prefix. It's only if the first one is a one. So I'm not going to have anything here. The second one is a three. So if you look at our chart, three is tri. So I'm going to squeeze the prefix tri in there. So nitrogen trichloride. That means we have one nitrogen and three chlorine. Here's some really common ones that you might recognize. Carbon dioxide. Notice that there's only one carbon here and one carbon here. Neither one of those have mono in front of them. However, once we get change that and we have two, we have di there. Notice nitrogen oxide. Uh, that's actually a bad one. That's a common name. It should technically it should be monoxide. However, because it's a common one, they don't use it. All right. So, Si first name the first nonmetal is silicon. And once again, you find that on the periodic table. Search the periodic table for it. That's why you want to get really familiar with the periodic table so you're not wasting time. Second one is chlorine. We have four of them. So if we look at our list, four is here. It's tetra. So it becomes tetra chloride because the second one ends and IDE. So silicon tetrachloride. Okay, so this next one. We know we have phosphorus.
There's two of them. If you look in our list, two is dye. So it's dye phosphorus. We have oxygen, which becomes oxide. And we have five of them. Five is penta. Remember the prefix, because the next one is, it starts with an O, the A gets dropped off. So diphosphorus pentoxide. Diphosphorus pentoxide. The next one, Cl is chlorine. There's two of them. We had two here, and it was di. The next one is oxygen, which becomes oxide. We need to figure out what seven is. Seven is here. Hepta. Remember that A gets dropped off because of that O being next. So dichlorine heptoxide. Dichlorine heptoxide. So let's name a few more. So C O C is carbon because the first one is a one, we're gonna ignore the prefix. Oxygen becomes oxide and one is mono, so monoxide. That O gets dropped off. Nitrogen, that first one's a one, so I'm not gonna worry about the prefix. Uh, o is oxide, oxygen becomes oxide. And two is di. So nitrogen dioxide. Next one, P is phosphorus. Because the first one's a one, I'm not gonna worry about the prefix. Second one's fluorine, which becomes fluoride. There's three of them. So if you look at our chart, three is tri. So it becomes phosphorus trifluoride. And the last one, C is carbon. It's a one, so I'm not gonna worry about the prefix. Chlorine becomes chloride. And I have to figure out what four means. Four is tetra. So carbon tetrachloride. Remember those prefixes are just simply memorization. So now we're going to write the covalent compounds when you're given the name. All you have to do is figure out what the symbols are and figure out what the prefixes mean. So diboron, so boron is the element, so that's going to be B. Di means two. Trioxide, oxide is oxygen with an IDE ending. And tri means three. So B2O3 is your answer. Phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus is P. Then there's no prefix, so that means there's no number here. Pentachloride. Chloride is chlorine. We had to figure out what penta means. Penta is right here. It means five. So that means that there are five chlorines. Nitrogen. And we just had di being two. And trioxide. 
Oxide is oxygen, and we just had tri being three. Sulfur is an S. Hexafluorine, since there's no prefix here, there's no number. So fluorine is an F. Hexa, you might relate it to hexagon, meaning six. So SF6. Pretty easy. I think these are easier than the ionic compounds. So let's take a look at naming as a summary of everything when we're trying to name a compound. First thing you have to do is figure out if it's ionic or covalent. If it begins with a metal, you automatically have an ionic. The one exception is if it's ammonium. So if it begins with either NH4 or a metal, you have an ionic compound. Covalent is two nonmetals. Notice that we're only dealing with two of them here. So the metal, is it one of the tall groups? Does it only have one charge? Can you look at the periodic table and tell me what the charge is? If it's a yes, you just simply name it. If it's a no, if there's multiple ones, if it's in a short row, if it's in here or here, that means you have to figure out what the Roman numeral is. For the, for the anion, that's the nonmetal, is it single or poly? Is it more than one? You ask yourself if there's more than one anion atom. A good way to figure that out is by looking at the compound all itself. If there's more than three, more than two capital letters. So if there's three or more capital letters, you know you have a polyatomic ion there. So if it's a single one, it just takes the first syllable and ends in "-ide". If it's more than one, you look at the list of polyatomic ions. Now if you go over to covalent, you just name the first nonmetal, name the second nonmetal, and then figure out the prefixes for both. There are two separate rules. Do not confuse them. Make flashcards determining which one is which. And you have to know what you're dealing with if it's a metal and nonmetal or two nonmetals before you even get started. So make sure you're familiar with the periodic table. So let's determine if it's an ionic or covalent. So S is here. Notice, here's the squiggly line. It's a nonmetal. When you start with the covalent, that means we're going to use the prefixes. So that means that's going to be sulfur. Since there's no number here, we're not going to put a prefix. We're good. Oxygen is here. It becomes oxide. I need a prefix in there. The three is tri. I'm going to let you look back at your chart rather than flipping back. BA is here on your periodic table. It's in a plus two row. Notice it's on the left of the squiggly line. That means it's a metal. That means we're going to use the ionic rules. Because I can determine its charge, I do not need Roman numerals. So I'm just simply going to write barium. And then CL is here. It's chlorine, and it becomes chloride. NH4 is the only polyatomic ion we have that's positive, and that's ammonium. So I do not look at the periodic table for this one. PO3, you can look at that chart, is phosphite. We had that earlier, too. I don't have to worry about Roman numerals because I can determine that NH4 
automatically it's a plus one. CU is right here. It is in the area of the Roman numerals. So that means I do need a Roman numeral for this one. So CU is copper. And I'm going to leave a space here for the Roman numeral. CO3. Notice I have one, two, three capital letters. I have a polyatomic ion in here. That means I need to figure out what CO3 is. I can look at the chart and figure out it's carbonate. I crisscross because I have to figure out what this Roman numeral is. So I'm going to put CO3 in parentheses because that 3 stays with the oxygen. I'm going to uncross it. And that becomes a 1 and a negative 2. Notice I put parentheses before I uncross it. Otherwise, that 3 would go in there. That, uh, that 3 has to stay with that group. Look on the chart, and it's supposed to be a minus 2, so we're good. So that means copper is a plus 1. Nitrogen is here. It's a non-metal. So that means I do not have to worry about charges. I'm just going to worry about prefixes. 2 means di. Di-nitrogen. Oxygen is oxide. Take the first prefix, first syllable, and put in "-ide". 4 is tetra. So I'm going to drop the A. Dinitrogen tetroxide. And that is a summary on how to name. Make sure you do lots of practice on this.